Microsoft's Windows makes up over 70% of operating systems used worldwide, with Apple's macOS only taking up around 15%. Now that may sound small in comparison, but that means just over 100 million people currently use macOS. But how did we get here? Well, Apple have released 21 major updates over the last four decades, each one introducing new features and functionality. But how much has it really changed in 40 years? Is their latest operating system as revolutionary as they claim? Or is it just fundamentally the same operating system that Steve Jobs released in 1984? Well, with the help of some of my favorite vintage tech, let's test out the pivotal releases of Mac OS. Let's kick things off with Mac OS Sequoia. Sequoia introduced a bunch of simple updates for Mac OS, but it also introduced a pretty big one, Apple Intelligence, AI built directly into Mac OS. And so far, I don't wanna be that guy, but it's like not that exciting. As of right now, it's kind of just like chat GBT inside of Mac OS. I'm sure it's gonna get more interesting soon. Some of the things that are super exciting about Sequoia though, are its improved gaming functionality. See, before now, Mac, Macs weren't for gaming. Apple seems to be on a roll right now with making gaming on Mac a thing, and I'm very excited about that. Now look, don't get me wrong, I think macOS Sequoia is one of the most stable, usable versions of macOS in a long time. But I don't think it's necessarily the most interesting release. So we're gonna check out my favorite macOS running on my vintage iMac G3. But before we can do that, we need to check out our next macOS, Yosemite. Now I've chosen to highlight certain versions here depending on how they impacted macOS as a whole. And macOS Yosemite released in 2014 was a pretty big change for Apple. Apple completely flipped the switch with how they approached design with iOS 7. Out with the kind of realistic skeuomorphism icons and in with everything flat. Literally everything. And it was pretty controversial at the time. Now, I don't know about you, but I was always a fan of iOS 7 and its flat design. I'm a sucker for that minimal design language. And so I was pumped when Apple decided that macOS Yosemite would follow that same design principle. A design choice that we still use over 10 years later. But Yosemite had a few other notable features, including handoff. The first time you could start something on your phone and finish it, on your Mac. And I remember it not being that good at the time, but it's gotten much better since. The spotlight feature also had a major update. So you could now search local files and essentially Google search all within Mac OS. But the one very important thing that was introduced with Yosemite was dark mode. Yep, that's right. 2014, we got dark mode on Mac OS. Next up on our list is Mac OS X Mountain Lion. Mountain Lion in 2007 was the first time that we got a Mac OS that supported retina displays. Crispy retina displays. It also introduced gatekeeper security, which honestly has been more annoying than not when you try and install an app and it just pops up. It's yeah. With Mountain Lion also came Game Center for Mac, which is what, do you guys remember Game Center? I don't know if I've ever used Game Center, but one of the biggest features that came with Mountain Lion was its ability to sync with the iPhone ecosystem. This was the first time that apps like Messages, Notes, Reminders were available on your Mac. Which is kind of crazy to think about. I take that for granted. It's one of my favorite parts about Mac OS is that it just syncs so simply to my phone. And it shows how big the iPhone's release was for Apple as a company. The success of it rippled through every other product, including Mac OS. So sick. Next up, we have macOS Tiger 10.4. This operating system has such a special place in my heart for a lot of reasons. But before we get to that, I feel like our set is missing something. What do you reckon? Better? <laughs> it just brings the place. It's just some vibes. It brings it alive, you know? <laughs> it was the operating system that I spent way too long trying to install on my vintage iMac G3. All I wanted was Tiger so that I could make beats on this thing in GarageBand. And to show you how far we've come since Tiger, we're gonna turn this bad boy on. The computer, we're gonna turn the computer on. Speaking of big boy, get in here, mate. Uh, ah! rap, uh, uh, claps. This is my best bud, Adam, who last time on the channel helped me build an almost drivable minecart in real life. But today he's gonna help me nerd out over some vintage tech. Did you ever use one of these back in school? Nah, man. Never. From a poor school, so <laughs> you didn't have one of those. I think you should do the honors and switch her on, dog. How do I do that? Uh, just that big button down front. Oh, yeah. Let's see what Mac OS Tiger Let's go, baby. looks like. Uh, Come on. Ah, oh, man. Does it normally take this long? No. Mm. This is not good, dude. Nothing, dude. Let's try that again. 
Oh, hey. hey! Okay, there it is. Whoa, it's all right. dude, this is crazy. There you go, dude. Mac OS. This is literally the same. It's literally the same. Mail's the same. Mail's the same, dude. Safari is the same. So check Finder. out Finder's always exactly the same, dude. Looks like, identical. I almost kind of like this more than the modern yeah, one. Yeah, it's I got a, it's got something like a bit more soulful about it. Hey, as I guess that's the whole design ethos of this thing is it's a bit more like. It's a bit more personable. Yeah, totally. It's like a little buddy. You're like, hey, dude. Hundred percent. What I find so interesting, right? Unlike the other versions of Mac OS, see that dock. <gasps> Which dock? <laughs> oh, dude, the dock at the bottom of Mac OS Tiger is pretty much the same as the dock that we currently have on Mac OS Sequoia, which is kind of crazy because, yeah, this. 2005, so almost 20 years, yeah. they went back to the design. But the underlying design ethos is basically still the same. Pretty much, dude. We've got a top bar, we've got a dock. What more do you want? <laughs> we got a bar, we, we got, got a dock. Bar. <laughs> Big thing about Mac OS Tiger was Spotlight. You know the little like Spotlight button at the top where you can search your entire oh, computer? Yeah, yeah. I take that so for granted because I use it every day just to open apps. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I need to open mail. I don't have the icon. I just type in mail, mail. and open it up. And for me, again, it holds a special place in my heart because it was the Mac OS that I always wanted and never got. It took me 16 years to get it. And you got it. Mac. We got there, we got there. It's now time to revisit arguably the biggest release of Mac OS. This release was one of the biggest changes in Apple's operating system since the release of the Macintosh back in the 80s. We're gonna get to that. Mac OS X or Mac OS X introduced the wild aqua bubble design language that we all still know and love. And as you just saw, it paired perfectly with the iMac G3. I personally feel like the Apple design team crushed Mac OS X. It was a massive shift in how Apple thought about operating systems and it really did pave the way for everything that we've already gone through. Something I didn't realize is that it was built off the back of Next Step, some technology that was built at Steve Jobs' previous company, Next. But it still allowed users to run older apps from Mac OS 9, now considered classic Mac OS. But of course, there were some flaws. <laughs> See, Mac OS X had a bunch of stability issues, and although it looked amazing, it didn't function as quickly as it should have, with a bunch of stability issues getting fixed in later versions. But more importantly than all of that, this was the first Mac OS that had the dock. Yep, this was where the dock was introduced, the way that we know it and still use it, the way we use it on our iPhones and iPads. This was it in 2001. And all these years later, <laughs> We are still using the dock. It's hard to go wrong with a simple bar and some icons, I guess. Next up, we have Mac OS 9. So we're getting into old school territory here, dude. And to show you what Mac OS 9 looks like, we have an iBook G3. Oh, so this matches so is. the other iMac G3, released about the same time. It's a little bit sketchy. <laughs> uh, at any moment, it could literally implode. It's very plastic. This is wild. It's proper crazy. It's like a sandwich press. <laughs> All right, bro, you do the honors. Turn that bad boy on. Move oh. that button. But see, you can see fundamentally, dude, it's the same thing. Like, it's got the top bar. The top bar. But what's missing? What's different? The dock. There's no dock. No dock. No dock. What do they do without the big dock? <laughs> yeah, it has a very like uh, clinical kind of feel about it. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like as inviting. At the time of this iBook, this was like top selling. The Toshiba Satellite Pro. Yeah, bro. Oh, no way. And so this was like, feel much how much heavier that is. I weirdly like this design more. You know why? Because it almost feels like current Apple standards. Oh, it's not that different. It's not that different, <laughs> dude. You know, like it feels, it's it's a bit more industrial. What are you doing there, mate? I, I just clicked. Trying to power it down is a little different, huh? I wonder if we just press the power button and see if it pops up with a thing. Ah, oh, okay. Oh. Maybe that would be the reason to do it. Yeah. You can tell Steve wasn't around. We have another release that we need to check out before we can get to the Macintosh 512K. And that is... System 7. Five years before I was born, <laughs> System 7 was the first Apple operating system that supported true multitasking. Yep, multiple windows, multiple applications. This was the first time you could do that on an Apple product. But even more exciting than that, System 7 had a colorful interface featuring way more vibrant UI. It also included the features of virtual memory, enabling users to use their extra hard drive space as RAM, as well as Apple Script and personal file sharing. Features that are just kind of built into macOS today that we don't really think about anymore. It just works. Dude, this is, uh, yeah, we are, we've made it all the way back, bro, to 
Mac System 3. This was before they even called it Mac OS, Mac mm. System 3. And on this Macintosh 512, my vintage Macintosh 512 from 1984, is System 3. I'm just gonna let you start it up and just, just get it going. It looks like it's smoked about a pack a day for the last <laughs> 30 years. All right, ready? I think there's a switch on the back here. Yep. This is so like industrial. Oi, there we go. So you don't get a lot, but you still get a top bar. Still top bar. It's top bar. There's not a lot on the right side. There's no other options. All you have is the apple at the top and- A trash bin. A trash bin and literally it's kind of the same. This mouse is crazy. Yes, sir. How smooth is System 3? Like, this is so old. This is 40 years old. I just forgot to consider how old this is and how so smooth this is. It just works. I just can't believe how quick it is. There's no waiting. It just opens the next thing. So what you're in right now is the floppy disk. So this disk only has Mac OS on it. Uh, and I made a whole video about playing games with this. It's called a floppy emu. I say emu though, because I'm Australian. Floppy emu. Floppy emu. It's also my nickname for you, you <laughs> floppy emu. Cool. And essentially what it does is emulate floppy disks. And we're gonna just plug this into the back here. Ah. Again, <laughs> it's not that much different. It's other just... than the dock. Yeah. It's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't right? have to learn how to use this. I Th can that's, just use it. Dude, that's what I'm saying. And here we are at the end of our list with Apple's System 1, released in 1984. Man, this is a cool, this is a cool one. This now simple and minimal operating system was the very first GUI OS. It changed computing with its graphical user interface. Seriously, before the release of the Macintosh and System 1, there wasn't another operating system that worked the way this did. This was the first of its kind. It introduced the ability to use a mouse. Apple introduced Finder, a way to manage all your files on your computer. The heart of Mac OS, literally the thing that keeps it grounded. It came with a bunch of different software that again, people had never seen before. Mac Paint may be trivial to us now, but man, back then, no one had ever seen that. System one was so impactful that it doesn't take a genius to see that not a lot has changed over 40 years of Mac OS. From the top menu bar to the dock, and of course, Finder. What we see in use today on Mac OS is fundamentally the same as what Steve Jobs released in 1984. I really weirdly like it. Wow. Yeah, bro. It's Thanks for crazy. our history lesson. Oh, that's, <laughs> you know what you gotta do. One last thing. You gotta work out how to turn it off. Oh yeah, turn it off. Okay, let's see if the Apple works here. I'll give you a hint. There's no way to turn it off with the software. <laughs> it's a switch. It's literally the switch, bro. It's the most tactile you can get. I love it. The dream. I wish everything went back to this. Right, man? Maybe I'm an old, I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs>